Welcome back to week one's lecture two. So we now want to talk about the economic function of the financial markets. In the previous video, we talked about uh, financial markets facilitating mutually beneficial intertemporal exchanges. So that is basic economic function of the financial markets to enable individuals to engage in mutually beneficial intertemporal exchanges in an efficient manner. Now, what do we mean by efficiency? What do we mean by an efficient manner? In economics, it has a specific meaning. Efficiency means a system of markets that enable persons who own resources to reach an economically efficient allocation. Now you would think it's kind of a roundabout way of defining efficiency. So let's talk about what an efficient allocation is. An economically efficient allocation is an allocation such that there is no alternative allocation that would increase at least one person's utility without decreasing any others, other person's utility. It sounds complicated, but it is uh, much easier if you understand it as all the opportunities of mutually beneficial exchanges are exhausted in an economically efficient allocation, which implies that all the economic agents who wanted to engage into mutually beneficial intertemporal exchanges were allowed or facilitated to do so. If that is the case, then we say that the financial markets have performed their function efficiently, which means we cannot find any other way of changing the beneficial exchanges such that we could increase at least one person's utility without decreasing any other person's utility. In economics or in welfare economics, this is known as the Pareto efficiency criterion. Now the Pareto efficiency criterion uh, could be a little bit difficult to implement as it requires a comparison or interpersonal comparison of utility. And given the fact that we are talking about uh, utility as an ordinal concept later, uh, we would have to look at efficiency from an alternative point of view. It turns out to thinking about equilibrium as an alternative way to express efficiency as an out of equilibrium configuration of prices and quantities. What, what do we mean by that? An equilibrium configuration of prices and quantities is a set of prices and quantities at which no buyer or seller has an incentive to make further purchases or sales. So it's about what incentives an individual faces. Think about forming a line at the checkout counter in a grocery store. Usually you would go around looking for the uh, looking for the line which has least number of people with least number of items. But if you think you are the only smart person doing that, it's certainly not the case. There are other people also doing the same. So what would you expect after sufficient time has passed, after all the people in the store have finished looking for the best line that satisfies their criteria? The answer is simple. All the lines will have exact number of people and nobody will have an incentive to look for any other line. That we will call as an equilibrium configuration. You can also think about equilibrium as a traffic jam on uh, highways, on congested highways. People, if you have noticed, uh, you uh, even you might have engaged into this kind of behavior, I know I have, is that if you move from one lane to another lane, we always think that we might go faster. But everybody is trying to do that. And if everybody does that, then ultimately all the lanes move at the same speed. 
that again is an equilibrium configuration. No driver has an incentive to move from one lane to another as all the lanes are moving at the same speed. So an equilibrium configuration of prices and quantities is similar to these situations. No seller or no buyer would have an incentive to make any changes to his or her purchases or sales at an equilibrium configuration of prices and quantities. Do financial markets always perform that way? Of course not. Financial markets, as is the case with all other kinds of markets, are prone to market failures. A market failure is a specifically defined concept in economics. A market failure of a financial market is an allocation of resources in which there are opportunities for mutually beneficial intertemporal exchanges that are not undertaken. So it means that uh, if there are people who go without loans, and there are people who actually want to save, but somehow these people cannot come together, then we will call it as a market failure. There are a number of mutually beneficial trades that can take place, but somehow they are not able to trade with each other. What's an example? Think about the recent financial crisis. It was about the securitization of mortgage loans. So would you think about a financial market failure as not being able to securitize a loan? Is loan securitization a mutually beneficial exchange that financial markets should facilitate? So think about these questions. We will return to these questions again when we have built up sufficient knowledge base to apply uh, to situations like these. In general, as I said, markets are prone to failures. And one of the reasons why markets are prone to failures is because of externalities. Externality is a situation where uh, the participants in the market transaction fail to account for all costs and benefits. In other words, there is a third party which is not part of the transaction between the firm and the consumer, but is affected either negatively or positively by that transaction. In that case, we say that markets do not, uh, do not perform efficiently. The market allocation is not an efficient one. There are possibilities of changes to that allocation such that Without changing anybody's utility, somebody else can be made better off. You must have heard about externalities uh, in several examples. For example, education is uh, a case of positive externality. Pollution, on the other hand, is negative externality. So is passive smoking. So what do you think? Are there externalities present in financial markets? That's an open question. I'll let you think about it and then we will la later return to it when we have uh, talked about uh, several other concepts that define financial markets and its transactions. Let's look at specific couple examples of financial market failures which we definitely can identify. One of the problem is called the problem of agency. In this, there is a principal and there is an agent. Principal hires the agent to do, to do a job which, when executed well, benefits the principal. Now, the question is, how does principal ensure that agent behaves in principal's self-interest and not the agent's self-interest? So this principal-agent problem is uh, the problem which is ubiquitous in many financial or otherwise economic transactions. So think about shareholders and firm managers. 
how do shareholders ensure that the managers that they hired uh, in the firm are going to behave in their own interests uh, in shareholders interests and not in the managers interests so that's the problem of agency and if the problem is not resolved if the agent is not given appropriate incentives which makes in his or her own interest to maximize principles uh, welfare uh, then the problem of agency is not solved and financial market uh, would fail the second uh, example of market failure is the problem of asymmetric information it's the inability of the party that has material information to transmit that information credibly to a second party which then can prevent what would otherwise be a mutually beneficial exchange. There is an insurance company which wants to insure you. You also want the insurance. But the insurance company does not know whether you already have the condition for which you want to insure yourself. If there is no way to resolve this information problem, then the company will not insure you. You will not be able to buy insurance. So there is this mutual beneficial exchange which will not take place if the company cannot credibly ascertain that you are not buying insurance because uh, you already have or you already are a part of the condition that the insurance covers. This is called the problem of asymmetric information. The third example is pro probably comes from the problem of agency where firms' managers actually transfer wealth, or they can transfer wealth, from bondholders to shareholders by substituting a riskier project for a less risky one. So a riskier project has higher return, a less risky one has lower return. A less risky one is more guaranteed and therefore the bondholders would like because they, are, uh, they want guaranteed payments. A riskier project would mean a higher risk, the shareholders would like it. But obviously, managers can transfer wealth if they substitute a riskier project for a less risky one from the bondholders to the shareholders. This is called the problem of asset substitution. As we go ahead, uh, we will talk about these problems and how they can be resolved. And before we actually do that, we will look into the details of how these problems lead to financial market failures. I now urge you to take the second quiz, uh, quiz of this week uh, and then move on to the homework. Thank you.